Hello, everybody. My name is Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food with Keto Under 20 Carbs. When I say Keto Under 20, I mean the carbohydrates that I'm having, the total carbohydrates that I'm having. I don't believe in the net carbs uh, for myself as a food addict in recovery. It's a day at a time, but I have to be very careful of thinking slippery thoughts. And net carbs would be slippery thoughts. I would think that I could squeeze in this and that. And um, in Ivor's new book, Eat Rich, Live Long, he promotes net carbs. So I just have to kind of have to squint at that part um, and just know that, you know, if you're an older woman like me and you've been addicted to food and disappointed and tried millions and gazillions of different food plans over the years, um, you might even be addicted to the food plans, if you know what I mean. And uh, so net carbs is, it's like, no, it, it's kind of like how Weight Watchers convinces you now with their 200 free foods that you can have extra carbs now and that it's not going to um, affect your body in a metabolic way. Mm, well, not for me. I like my food, you know, my meats, my fats, my veggies, and um, my coffee, always my coffee. So I'm, I'm, so I went and bought new toothpaste, and I know I've tried all the organic, earthy, crunchy Toms, all of them, and they just don't cut through the, what I call, mung mouth. Um, when you work overnight in the police department and you're dealing with people up close and personal, and you get a new arrest and you're working with the lieutenant or the sergeant, I don't want to have mung breath, right? So I need a cut through it, real strong, you know, toothpaste. I also use the Act too. So anyway, I bought a, a different toothpaste just of a different flavor because I have one with one thing and I bought another with another thing just, just to freshen up because I'm not doing gum anymore. See, this is the side effect of not doing gum is that you kind of like sometimes feel like it could be knocking somebody over with bison breath, right? So I got a new toothpaste and yes, I expect the fluoride to be in it because it's, you know, one of those um, mung mouth attackers versus, you know, good for your mouth and fluoride we do the best we can right and i'm triple triple filtering my water to keep the fluoride out so um it is in the toothpaste but i i, I promise you i'm not swallowing the toothpaste if i was i'd be tracking it right so i get this and i'm reading the ingredients carrageenan carrageenan in my toothpaste so yep they slip it in everywhere don't they wow all right, so I'm trying something new, not for any other reason that um, I'm just trying something new. So I usually have two Bulletproof coffees and they're both um, fat-wise, calorie-wise, they're the same. And except I exchange one tablespoon of coconut oil with one tablespoon of Brain Octane by Dave Asprey, Bulletproof coffee. And so I was having those two, they're equal in calories every day. And I've decided to make one big um, bulletproof coffee with three tablespoons of oil and no heavy whipping cream for my morning one. And then in my next cup of coffee, it is heavy whipping cream um, only, no oils. And then on my big, big green leafy at night, I'm having three tablespoons of the oils every night because they fit. And so I'm going to try this out and see how it how it works, how I do, because when I'm having my bulletproof coffee at like three or four in the morning, will I last the whole 12 hours till I eat again? I suppose I will. And I'll probably, truth be told, have a um, as strong as I can caffeine coffee for the second cup of coffee, because I'll just exchange fats for caffeine. You know how we roll with that stuff. And, um, oh, this was funny. I was talking with one of my friend's clients here and um, and I was talking to her about the same thing and she, she really is a, a sister from a different mother. <laughs> she really is. We're the same age though. So it must be from a different father. Anyway, so um, um, she is, is getting set to do her first weigh-in um, as a coaching client. And she said, I, I don't want to use the phone. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to add the weight of the phone onto my 
um, weigh in. <laughs> and I told her, I don't either. I mean, call us crazy, but are any, are any else of anyone else of you doing the same thing? You don't want that extra three or four ounces from the phone? Too freaking funny. So I told her that I hop on without the camera, get the weight, quickly take the camera and snap the shot of the, of the weight, the LED reading. We are crazy. We really are. And so there was that. And, um, and then she was talking about, um, using the scale, um, a few times during the week when she wasn't supposed to, because the first thing or the second, or maybe it's the third thing I say to you is that weigh yourself for your, um, baseline weight and then put it away. And of course, I know some of you are smiling because you're saying, is she talking about me? Well, no, I did this before she was my coach. Hmm. Anyway, so she says she admits that she's cheated a little bit and pulled it out and weighed herself through the week. And um, we are such women, aren't we? We just I, It's just so funny how we are so attracted to our scales and so repulsed by them at the same time. So anyway, they should have an electrical charge. They should... They should have this um, chip in them that shuts off for one full week and only comes back on for that weigh-in, right? And you get a jolt if you, <laughs> if you stand on it. So anyway, I said, I said we should have this thing. Um, re remember um, swear jars? Um, maybe they still, maybe people still do them, but I know when my kids were little, we had like the swear jar. And if they sweared, they had to take like a dollar or a quarter or something and put it in the swear jar. And I said, yeah, as, as my as my client, we should have a swear, we should have a um, scale jar. And if you weigh yourself, you have to put five dollars in the jar. Only you have to mail the five dollars to me. So if you weigh yourself four times that week, you almost have a free month of me coaching you. <laughs> I I know, I know. We have a sickness, and um, you know there there is a there is a twelve step meeting for Scales Anonymous, and um, they're hard to find. But if you find them, you know, you will find other people just like you. Don't you love this food plan in our community? We can be so totally honest with ourselves. Now, if I told Greg this whole scale thing, he'd like, what? what is the big deal? You need to gain 10 pounds anyway. <laughs> oh, so today, 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 I'm using my chronometer. Are you using yours? Do you know how much it helps you to figure out your recipe and how you do things and how it works? You know you do, it's just doing it, right? So my, excuse me, my macros today, and it's a, it's a low day, I had an overdose day yesterday probably of my one meal a day because I had prime rib. And so my calories today are 1,281 and um, 3% of my food plan is carbs. And, and here's Ivor saying 10 or 20, right? And it's like, no, 3%. Um, my fat is 83% of my total diet. And my protein is 14% of my total diet. So uh, car, uh, calories are 1281. Protein is 42.8. So I'm right there in that zone that I like to be in. Carbs are 11.4. And fat is 119.8. So I still have the high fat even though I'm knocking off one of my Bulletproof coffees because I'm going to have a more oily one, um, fatty one as one. And then um, always three tablespoons of my macadamia nut extra virgin olive oil in my salad every night. So the um, <clears throat> I made a um, Mississippi roast, uh, Mississippi pot roast beef stew. So I just eliminated having the roast the roast for the dinner and just bought a smaller piece of the chuck roast. And with the um, mixtures, I cooked it in my Mathis Stewart little cast iron pan in the oven. And so um, with that, I mix in, um, it's one and a half ounces of the cauliflower crumbles. So four ounces of the beef and one and a half ounces of the cauliflower crumbles and then the broth part. And so it's like, you know, it's like a bowl of stew. And then I'm having my great big salad. And in my uh, great big green leafy salad, this is the one where I don't add other things. Um, I add one ounce of the 365 feta cheese, which is delicious. 
and then the three oils, but otherwise it's just the lettuces. So they did not have any um, organic romaine yesterday or two days ago at Market Basket. So I got organic red leaf, which I like a lot. So it's organic red leaf. It is organic baby spinach. It is organic baby arugula. Um, and then it is the watercress uh, leaves. And so it is 50 grams of each of them. So it is 200 grams in my great big pretty um, flowered bowl with the three tablespoons of the oil and the one ounce of the feta. So, and on the side, 60 grams of asparagus, those real skinny ones that you saw in my Easter dinner um, picture. And so that's, that's the fun that I'm having today. If you're not familiar with Chronometer, it is a very user-friendly app and uh, it will give you, I think, even with the free version, as you can see, it gives the macros right there. And um, that's kind of how I base my food plan. I like my fats, 110 to 120. Sometimes they go all the way to 125. And um, other times, um, yeah, so it's in that range. And then um, my protein, I keep under 50. And then... Uh, my carbs. I like under 15 because I got an old resistant metabolism. It's probably called insulin resistant because of so many decades of the standard American diet. And so if you're having your carbs at 20, and I hope that they're total and not net and all that kind of other stuff. So say you're having 20 total carbs and the scale is just not responding. Keep your protein lower than maybe what you thought it should be. Um, people even either they give that like 0.04 to to um, 0 0.6 something like that or 0 0.06 grams of protein per um, lean mass body mass. Well, what's my lean body mass? You know what I mean. So I don't I don't understand how they do that. That's a little too um, you know dropped out of uh, junior high sort of thing for me. And um, I didn't drop out of junior high, but you know, just no, no, just, so I keep my protein well under 50 every day. And so to me, that's very low, even though I say moderate protein. And then um, the carbs, I keep them very low. As you can see today, they're under 13. And that just works for me. And the salad takes a while to eat. That is another one of my tricks is having, you know, a low, calorie, low carb vehicle for the oils, right? And all of those wonderful vitamins like the K2 and things like that, the oil helps your body absorb the wonderful vitamins like that into your system. So it's nutritionally dense and it's not being wasted because the oils help your body to absorb those wonderful vitamins. And if you've ever picked up a package of watercress and flipped it over and seen the nutrients it has in it. It's powerhouse. And I love the taste of watercress. I'm not a kale fan, either is my stomach. And so when I discovered watercress, my one real takeaway from Dr. Oz that made sense, I became an instant fan and it's always in my salads. And I purchased, it's made by, or distributed by B&W Cress, and you can find it online and you can find the stores near you that carry it if you are a leafy fan. And um, I purchased mine at Whole Foods, has it for the same price as Stop and Shop. Stop and Shop is a regular grocery store like Piggly Wiggly and Publix and all of those. And so, yes, and I have those oils. And so it takes a while to eat as does the stew. So I'm having a nice little, it says under 1300 calories. And um, this is just an FYI. I always put a tablespoon of butter in my chronometer food. So I'm always having 120 calories that are just in there in case I'm cooking, in case, you know, in this case, in case like I'm finding that the, the coffee, the second coffee isn't carrying me through to dinner, but I'm sure it will. I just stay busy. I'll have another mineral water if I have to. That works for me. It's just changing, exchanging one beverage for another. I do well with things like that. Then I just get used to it. I just get used to it. It's like the time chains. It's just, I get used to it, right? 
So anyway, I hope you're having a wonderful day. One-on-one -on -one coaching for 30 days is available at ketocoachingsarah.com. And if you're loosey-goosey and slippery and know that you just need to be tightened up, um, that's the place to go, ketocoachingsarah.com. And um, I can set you up for 30 days of my annoying emails. And uh, it's they're personalized. It's not like, you know, you get an email in the morning that says, hey, add a girl, add a boy, you can do it. It's like, no, we, we get forensic with our chronometer <laughs> food um, snapshots and our macros. And it works. If nothing else, it's like boot camp. It's like the exercise. It's like you're going to join a boot camp, you know, in April for 30 days to get that fitness thing going and to stop, you know, holding off on what you need and uh, taking care of it. And then you've got, you've got it all after 30 days. Some people go further and um, just to keep it going, just to answer to somebody to have that second set of eyes. It just works. It's like a boot camp. And it's basics because that's what we talk about here, the basics. Even Ivor's book on basics um, or section on basics. So that's how we roll here. Have a wonderful day. This has been Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food with Keto, under 20, toothpaste with carrageenan. The suggestion of the scale jar where you put $5 in it if you're cheating on weighing yourself. And you don't have the scale with a chip in it that gives you an electrical jolt if you get on it when you're not supposed to. What an invention that would be. Really, seriously. And, you know, a male scientist would be going, this is so stupid. It's like, oh, you think it is? Every woman in America would be buying one. <laughs> have a wonderful day. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food. So glad you're here. Bye-bye for now.